guys, thanks for stopping by my channel today. I am so glad you're here with me as I make some room sprays. My name's Tammy, Ellen Walnut Creek Bath Boutique. So guys, a lot of you that have been around here for a while are probably sick of hearing me talk about how I'm trying to get ready to redo my floors in here. So if you've heard this before, fast forward. But I am doing a huge refresh in this room where everything is coming out, like literally the drywall is the only thing that's gonna be in this room. <laughs> I'm going to be painting, ripping up carpet, redoing the floors, all of that stuff. And I'm also going to be doing that out in the at least part of the basement that I utilize for my business. I don't want to move things around twice. So if I can use things up and not have to try to find a spot for them when we are done in here, that's going to make my life a little bit easier. A couple things that I want to move out other than my bottles is a couple of ingredients. Now, I used to make lotions a lot, and I stopped making lotion because my creams outstripped my sales of lotion like five times more sales and creams than lotion. So I bought a huge jug of cyclomethicone. Huge. And it's it's got a lot in there. Lotion Crafter has formula for room spray that is basically cyclomethicone and uh, fragrance. That's it. It's more expensive than the other formula that they have for room spray, but it's better than letting this go bad and throw it away. <laughs> I printed the same recipe twice. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> My other recipe is using this Capril, Capril Micro Express. It's a surfactant. I don't exactly understand how this all works, honestly. But it's basically water, the CME, this is surfactant, and fragrance. And that's it. So these are really easy recipes. I will link them down below so you can check them both out. That way I don't feel like I'm stepping on their toes. I'm not gonna give you like the percentages or anything, but I'm following what they said. The only thing I'm doing is I am adding a preservative to both of these that is not called for. So just a heads up on that one. If you're selling it, I think you should add a preservative, but you do you. Let's get to making. All right, guys, I have my apron on, my hairnet on, and now I'm putting on my gloves. I did spray everything down. I know it's not for body, but I wanna make sure that I'm not causing any sort of issues in with this formula or the other one. We're gonna start with the cyclomethicone. And I'm doubling this one. I'm last second decision, I'm doubling it. And the reason I'm doubling it is I have six of these metal spray tubes as well. The reason I had these was I did have a purpose for these guys <laughs> as opposed to half my other packaging and ingredients. I had a purpose and that was deodorants. I was doing the spray deodorants. They don't sell for me like my solid and my balms do. So I'm no longer gonna be making the spray deodorants. I have six of these left. Three goes for this recipe and three for the other. Done. All right. For this room spray, I just wanted to have a little fun. And I, uh, I, I'm gonna do apple cider donut. It, it's just, I think, I don't know how well it'll, it'll sell, but I just, I wanted to do something fall and fun. And I'm thinking that Mrs. Myers or something, she has all kinds of, you know, fun scents like that. Why can't I? <laughs> so that's where that's coming from. All right, preservative. I'm using Optifin Plus as my preservative. That is it. This is done, guys. What an easy recipe to just throw together. Uh, and that's probably a good thing because my, my uh, markup or my profit margin is not all that high, especially with the 
the cyclomethicone uh, formula. It's not a, a huge markup. So the fact that it only takes me 10 minutes max, and that includes labeling, doesn't include creating the labels, but it includes the action of labeling. It's kind of a no-brainer. I'd love to see these sell. I mean, it's they're a fun little thing to have on your table. Let's see. Since I doubled it, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to get out of it. As in how many? Sorry, I've got sinus drainage. I'm not sick. I just have, it's these allergies are killing me. This, it was um, 90, it was like 89 or 90 degrees on Tuesday and like 60 on Friday. I mean, like, <laughs> and I made a comment like, welcome to Indiana. And I'm thinking, you know what? I bet every person in the country says that or in the world. <laughs> All right, let's see how many, how much I'm going to get out of here. I got, oh wait, I gotta get my thing in there. 4.25, I think that's pretty good actually. I'm gonna give it another quick stir, just keep things moving. I'll leave those open. There's a little room in there if I need to add to them to kind of finish everything off, I can. So now I'm going to get my plastic bottles. Okay, so I made, let's see, eight, 10 with the three here. And then I have a full one uh, over here. They're not quite full. My, I have testers that I was able to make. I wanna do one final way, because I did pour some more in there. Okay. About four, 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 five. Not quite. You know what? I could go up to four and a half. Look at that. All right. These all got four and a half. That'll help me know on my next round that I'm gonna put four and a half in those as well. And then I'm gonna set this one aside. So that I know it is the tester because there's a little bit less than these. Get everything kind of cleaned back up, reset, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, on to round two. So what happened? is I was going to do like a lemon, grass, lime type of EO blend that I found. I thought I had lemongrass and I don't. I think it expired and I had to get rid of it. So I found a different one on the EO calc. I can't remember the name of it, but it, it calls for spearmint, peppermint, and lime. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe, maybe we'll try that because it's pepperminty and spearminty and maybe it'll be you know, appropriate for this time of year. I already have my water in here, so now I'm gonna get my CME or Capril Micro Express. I'm not quite using up all my ingredients that I was hoping. I may have to make a couple more batches, but you know, I want them to sell too. I, want to te I don't want to just do it and not test that they're going to sell. Um, all right. So spearmint is pretty low. 2.55. Let me go back to my back counter on my smaller scale, guys. I'll be right back. My pot is very full. This smells pretty good, guys. That may be a winner. All right. I'm going to go fill this up with my... Uh, Optifin Plus. Plus. 
And I did switch to a whisk just to hopefully make sure it's good and combined. Oh, I still need that. What am I doing? Look how milky that is. That's awesome. So guys, check this out. That's that's fairly low. My uh, lavender also, or my clean clean uh, cotton is a lot lower than my lavender, but they're both two ounces. Um, just kind of odd how that works out with the um, the weight of the different fragrance oils and things. What am I doing? I'm not paying attention. Last one for testing, but I still will weigh it off. And that way I can put it in my software to show that this amount of product was set aside for, oh, I'm a little high here, hang on. For my testing purposes, And you know what? I am going to do a final way without this just to make sure that all of these have exactly two ounces. I do have a little bit left and I have an extra. So I just want to, you know, kind of recheck myself. Three left, guys. Three. Pretty close. Uh, there's a couple that are actually just like 1.95 instead of two. So I'm topping those off. I'm not worried about 2.05. That's fine. Um, and the thing is, I, I don't mind giving more. But it's not fair to the person that buys it at two ounces as opposed to then turn around and they buy a different one for 2.25 ounces. It, it just doesn't seem right to do that. All right, two left because I'm gonna use this as a, a uh, tester. Point eight. Let me write that down. And actually looking at my recipe, this is about an ounce more than my previous recipe. So that kind of makes sense now. I'm down to two of these bottles. That's my tester. That's so great. Down to two. What am I going to do with two bottles? I don't know. I do have these, I think, I think they're either four or eight ounces. I'm not sure. I have these same bottles, but they're a little bit bigger. I think they're four ounces. Um, so if these sell, because I think I've made enough, I have just a little bit of the CME, C, Copa, CME left. And I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I should just use that up. I have a good amount of the cyclomethicone left. And I have a lot more of these than I have bottles. That's crazy. All right, guys, I'm gonna go get my labels designed and printed, and then we'll come back and label these up. Oh no, I'm, I missed one. I thought I needed three, I needed four. Guys, off camera, I made another one. <laughs> I did. I used up the last of that uh, surfactant that I had. So that is now gone. I found these other bottles that I have. They're clear, four ounces. So I whipped up some labels. I'd like to say quickly, but it's it's been several hours that I've been <laughs> trying to get all these labeled. Maybe not several, but it probably two. So the making of it is like 10 minutes. And then you have 
the time to design, print, cut, label, all that good stuff on all of these jars. There. So I have eucalyptus and spearmint. Here's my jar for apple cider donut. I think that's cute. Um, then I did the peppermint lime. Hopefully that's in, I can't tell if it's blurry. The camera's so far away from me, I can't reach it. So that's peppermint lime, peppermint lime little travel maybe. Maybe I'll market it as a travel. And then from yesterday, I have my lavender and clean cotton. And then I have my last tester sticker. So I made a little, just a little sticker to put on the bottles. Just kind of like that. So that's the testers and I have all of my testers here for my table. Ah! Guys, I made too many. <laughs> and I forgot I needed four instead of three. Dang it. Room sprays. They're done and they're easy. So easy to make a room spray. Uh, it's just, again, it's the labeling that takes all the time on these. I think they're really cute. I like the little aluminum bottles. Uh, but I also like the little frosted two ounces. I think those are cute. I'm trying to figure out my price point on these. I checked out Etsy. Guys, a four ounce room spray is anywhere from like 12, 12, 8, 12 to $22. <laughs> There's, I don't know why I go on there to check out what other people are, are charging just to kind of get a feel for things because there's always such a wide range of prices. Um, I'm still trying to figure out my prices on these, but I think they're cute and they're fun and they're easy. And I hope they sell because I made a jack ton of them. I don't, I, I don't even think I want to count them right now. I made so many. <laughs> I hope they sell, but I got rid of some bottles. I, well, I shouldn't say I got rid of, I used up some bottles. I used up an ingredient and I still have a good amount of cyclomethicone if I want to make these again in the near future, I can. I really do want to try to use up some of that. I want to keep a little bit on hand, just to have on hand, but I don't need that big jug. So if I can use those in this application and kind of move that off my shelf, win-win guys, it's a win-win. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I've, I've made room sprays before, but I had never made them on the channel and I just, I thought it would be something different for us to experience together. So I hope you had fun. I hope you stay tuned for my next video. Not sure what it's going to be. It'll be next week though. I do know that. <laughs> so that's it guys. Thanks so much. Bye.